Hey everyone, Captain Amazing here, and today we're going to do a roster review. So let's jump into it. So our review today is for DN Jisme with Malakor's Legacy Ascents. They have not super great late participation. I think they did say they're a return player. Yeah, so they're a return player, so that under, that's understanding why they're number 38 with a an executor. So it happens. I, I totally understand that. They're in Erodium 2. I would like to see more fleet participation. I do, and, and I will say this um, before we, we jump more. So a lot of players say that, you know, oh, they have a bunch of Leviathans and etc. But usually you can try to climb... Um, and, and here, let's let's jump into my fleet shard. So some players say like, oh, they can't. And I, I, I want to say like, hey, that's not always the case. Usually you will get pushed back up, but there's always opportunities. So let's say here. So this is not a great example because there's just a line of, of Leviathans right here from, um, let's say, 14 all the way up to 3 all leviathans so sometimes there's a reprieve um but for this for my shard like realistically okay like 15 you can get top 20 um but then you know you have these two guys over here with one and two with profundity so realistically uh, if you didn't have a way to beat a leviathan in one shot then hey you can climb up to 15 in my shard so that's a lot better than 38 and then you get pushed back down and then you climb back up um, but usually there's breaks in between these where you can climb on profundities and executors in between these leviathans and if there is this just huge wall of leviathans and you can't get through it then the best thing to do is you know climb as much as you can get one hour before your payout and then try to get the best placement you can for your payout. And if you can do that reliably, then at least you're getting some payout that's better than than what you're getting currently. Like at least you are getting some some of your uh, you're getting some currency. Um, but if you if you can do that, then that's even better overall for your account, and you start earning more crystals. It's hard. You have to. If you have to, you have to move your fleet payout to where you can play an hour before so you can do your five attacks. But if you can do that, sometimes you may even be able to get first because it was a long time before there was a whole wall of Leviathan and uh, Leviathans in my shard. So there may be enough profundities and executors in there. And even with a five star executor, you can be profundities or seven star profundities and seven star executors that you can climb up all the way to maybe top five so that that's like my first advice for you if possible um that that would be my recommendation all right so that you're at 6 million gp 3.3 in characters 2.7 in ships and you have about a year and some change uh getting close to getting close to like a year and i don't know eight months seven months of active time played so not bad. You have Ray five Zetas on there. On there, you do need the one, probably basic or, yeah, the basic. The basic's still good. I would recommend getting it. Don't don't ignore that basic. GLs deserve all their Zetas, so don't believe that hype where they're like, ah, eh, basic's not important. I would say all the Zetas are important for all the GLs. So uh, just just go ahead, go ahead and get that. Um, you did say you bought pretty much all the light speed bundles except for Ewoks. Um, understandable. I would say Lightspeed Bundles, if you buy them, they're all worth it just for the bronzium wiring that you save. But, you know, to each their own, it's your money. If you don't want, if you don't want furry bears, then you don't want furry bears. So, um, but you probably have enough here that you can get the investment that you need for getting C3PO. So you, you farmed them all at gear 12, a little bit of an, of an, over expenditure of resources, but nothing we can do about that now. All right, so notable things in your account, six million. So you have a R7 Star Killer. I do like that. I will say like Force Repulse is a good Omicron if you have a spare one. I would say borderline necessary 
for that counter. Like it, it can work without it, but it's a lot better. Offense, crit damage, offense, some decent mods on this guy. Um, health, I do like an offense primary here, personally. It is worth it, you have offense here, so if you take this all the way, like all these stats are good. So if you were gonna like keep a speed arrow here, then this is a good one to go with. Um, just slice it up, take it to six dot. It, otherwise, um, I do like offense primary here with decent, uh, decent speed subsets so that you can get him hitting that much harder. Uh, but it's up to you. It's a good character. All right, let's look at these mods for Ray real quick since we're already looking at mods. All right, so decent health, speed isn't too important, damage like this is okay. It's it's not great. Like the speeds are a little lackluster. A lot of lackluster. The luster is lacking. Like pretty much this one is carrying the speed. Um yeah. Not the best. Not the best. Um, so the raise mod still needs some working. So it's like, it's okay. Like, honestly, nothing to write home about. Like, it'll work for now. But I would like to see some more investment in that character overall. All right, let's see Mara J 341. That's good. Really good, actually. 318. Speed's dropping off a little, but 318 on Poe is good. 317 on Rex, also good. So you have a you have a decent Phoenix, you have a decent um, Zori, you have a decent Star Killer. So that's good. Dash 304, not horrible. 302 on Zori, that's good. All right, I would like to see more protection on this Bosk. Yeah, all this should be protection, protection, protection. Uh, speed so it should be speed protection 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 uh, Tenacity is a bit of a legacy Legacy way to mod him, but overall Not not horrible mods not horrible mods in general, so I, I don't hate it I'm not a big fan of this Omicron to be completely honest So for those watching there's nothing you can do here, but this is a really legacy Omicron that it can enable some things um, and she's gear 12 too, not even relic. So uh, what it can enable is if they have a, if your opponent has a bad Malgus and you have a Zam Omicron, then you can sometimes get ahead of that Malgus speed wise and then insta kill him and then clean up the rest. So it could be useful for that. But otherwise it's, it's not really that useful and it's really niche and even that weak Malgus still loses to like the same ca Malgus counters like Jedi Knight, Calcastus, Gas and I would rather not have this really niche Omicron and I would rather save it for something that's better. There's so many Omicrons, good Omicrons nowadays. I would say it, it like Zam doesn't cut the mustard anymore even early game like late game not useful or like maybe mid game it may have a like a small home uh with your bounty hunters but you know bounty hunters are good but they don't need zam and i, I would say it's a it's definitely a luxury um maybe even down below a luxury down to like niche it's like a niche omicron um so uh, overall i would say not the not a good one uh let's see your night sisters what do you have here so the good thing is you have, okay, not, not, so I would say this, like you have Marin, it's Relic 3, you have the Zeta. You should put a Zeta on Mother Talzin's lead and Old Daka's unique, and then get this team fully up and running. Like you just need, all, like if you did that, then this team would be very, very good. You can put it on defense, you can take it on offense, whatever you want to do, but like just two Zetas is the cost. And then you get a fully functional team, especially now that you have Marin. As long as you put it, yeah, you put it on Shadow Stride. So it just put that investment on these guys and then you won't you won't regret it because you, you get a fully functional team for that. So I, I would do that. Um, you did mention that you're working through all the care. You don't really know how to prioritize as far as like what to do because you have a lot of like side farms that you're trying to build up so okay so you didn't buy the gas bundle 
Um, you have a decent negotiator, decent malevolence. Let's see. I think you do need to work on some of your ships. So most definitely, like these... Oh, man. <sighs> so this needs some work, definitely. Like, and oh, man. This is Galactic Republic abuse right here. I don't know how you, why you have a Relic 7 negotiator with a Relic 7 Kenobi. And then you have... Like this one, 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 one low stars. Oh man, this is that's such a good fleet for you to be not having in, any investment in. Okay, at least you have this fully invested in, so that's good. Mm, you still, I would, I would get all his abilities leveled up. Some people don't do the basic, but I did because his, uh, his vulture droids are based off the summon of the ship. So all, every ability that you increase on here increases the vulture droid strength that you summon. So something to think about as well. But overall, um, you need a ship harder. You really do. So let's see. There's there's some there's some good things about this and some bad things. Like hey, you have your bounty hunter fleet up and running. You have more investment into. Uh, you have a Relic 7 Bam and a Relic 3 Xanadu Blood. That's really bad, believe it or not. Um, there's a cheese strat where you can pretty much auto-lose um, to any any um, mirror match because of how bad the speeds are. You can watch it from Bit Dynasty's videos, but you don't want like a crazy fast Razor Crest and compared to a slow Xanadu Blood. Um, I guess if you're going like triple attacker, that's fine, but you need to get like IG faster. You need to put more investment in Xanadu Blood. Um, but this is like a crazy imbalance and your speeds are really off, which means you're probably struggling. And that may be why you can't, uh, you can't win because you're just like, well, captain, you know, I can't beat these seven star. Um, you can't beat these seven star executors because your speeds aren't right on on this executor and it's unfortunate because you can't like take stuff off of your account and it's really counterintuitive right but ideally you would want like 180 speed on razor crest and 181 on xanadu blood and then you can go second than most um and then you can beat those mirrors and then for profundity it has enough health where you can survive the profundity attack with your razor crest but it's it's really unfortunate that you have this much imbalance of investment because your 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 executor is only five stars which means you're going to go second every time but your razor crest is high enough that it could like it could go it, it's just it the speeds are all messed up essentially and executors all about speed like it's all about the turn order um and your your turn order is a little out of whack so um my best advice maybe try to accelerate as much as you can on your your executor and then bump up those relics a little if you want to it's up to you you don't have to you can kind of leave it what it where it is and just put it on defense and hope for the best but um it's it's really going to hurt you in the long run so um yeah i don't know you're just gonna have to make a decision off that other than that side farms i would start getting your negotiator fleet up and running like to put some investment into anakin honestly like the there was some i'm pretty sure there were some bundles or something that had anakin i don't i don't know yeah i think it was the gas bundle you really missed out on that one um yeah the you can buy the lightspeed bundle for this trash jedi that will help and that'll get you plo Koon, i guess um but if you're not going to do that and you're just going to farm it like i would i would get this Fleet up and running at like bare, super bare minimum, at least like gear 12 on fives, Anakin, like gear nine or something on Plo Koon, and then get the Y Wing. You should farm all your pilotless ships as well. Like bare, bare minimum. I would like to see relics on them, but you know, like, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Um, I do like that you have gear 12 on Aiden. So you don't have the TIE Interceptor yet, but you know, this is still functional where it is. So I, I like that, I really do. But you, you need to just like continue working on your fleets, one fleet at a time. Don't stop, get this negotiator up and running, slowly get the shards for Radis and Finalizer, and then just do do what you gotta do to, to get this up and running. Uh, but don't stop, like keep working on one fleet at a time until you have all the fleets. As far as like this, um, SOKR, you need to get SOKR in your account. So, and I would say like weave assault battles with, um, assault battles with big farms, but you're like the obvious 
first next choice that you need is going to be SOKR. So let's look at your first order. Yeah, it doesn't look like you're really starting towards it yet, but SOKR is the biggest thing that you need to get in your account. Um, I don't know why you haven't really started going for it and you're working like this side stuff, but SOKR here, you have the bundle, you have the finalizer at five stars. Just get the relics up and that should be your number one priority is SOKR. Just get it. That'll be your second GL. He's amazing on offense. He has some great Datacrons right now. Um, and you Datacron, you have Datacrons for him. Uh, so like you should, you should get SOKR like right now. That should be your priority. And you even have Thrawn. So, and you're pretty close to, to Malik. So if you get Malik, you get Thrawn, then you have a um, Malgus Proving Ground. And then with those three characters, you can be every single Proving Ground that's available right now. So I would say, if you want to, you can go, um, you can go SOKR into uh, like probably Imperial Troopers if you don't have it. Yeah, Imperial Troopers. So get Dark Trooper up to Relic 5, get your Veers up and running. Like you have an R8 Piet. This is Trooper Abuse right here. So Gear 12 range, Gear 12 Veers at least relic five dark trooper and then you can use stark or moff gideon whatever you want and then that boom that's an actual usable um imperial trooper team it's going to do a lot of great things for you sith empire so finish sokr start farming the shards for range trooper after you finish sokr get your um get your imperial troopers up and running that's going to give you two assault battles at ct3 if you do gear 12 range trooper gear 12 veers and then relic five dark trooper and that'll have a usable team for you um next you should go after that let's see i want to see your sith probably malik so if you do malik that or actually you have treya so tr you can do sokr with treya so you can go sokr treya thrawn um and then the other tanks and that could probably get beat malik for you so if you just unlock sokr treya is going to really do it for you i would say sith empire is really useful though so if you want to get that up and running too then and since you already have a jedi knight revan if you want to start farming for jedi uh darth revan and then get malik that could give you the proving grounds plus sith empire is really good it eventually leads to empire um or it eventually leads to the leviathan so um and then get malik and that's an excellent farm so you can do that as well as thrawn to, to get the proving ground i found that really reliable or you can use the darth treya instead and that's also usable i don't know how reliable it is without malik but I've, i have seen people beat it with treya or thrawn as well and then if you just do treya and thrawn i think you might be in a, a pretty good position to somewhat beat it reliably with less I, i'm pretty sure it can be beaten with that um just with less rng so 100 percent though sokr into imperial troopers from there honestly you can go continue side farming your gungans and whenever they're ready you can do that or you can do the jedi continue farming uh, Master Qui-Gon, Padawan, Obi-Wan once they're farmable and get their assault battle up and running um, and then eventually start going towards like Jedi Knight Luke into um, into Jabba and that way you'll have pretty much like all the assault battles except for um, except for the inquisitors and then once you have four gls two gl ships you can farm your inquisitors and that's probably what i would recommend for this account i, I know it may seem like kind of long and convoluted but it's a good farming pathway if you do that just make sure whatever you do with this account like oh you have a seven star watt too so as long as you have um like absolutely side farm those galactic republic um a hundred percent for to get that negotiator fleet up and running even gear 12 um go all in on sokr then imperial troopers start weaving them in you can side farm for malik not absolutely ne necessary if you don't want to um but i you know you don't have to go all in on like every single team that you have here like jedi knight revan hermit yoda bounty hunters uh, Iden would be good at relics once you have the tie interceptor but even at gear 12 she's fine um i would say like keep your eyes on the prize finishing 
uh, assault battles, finishing those big farms is what you're trying to do so that you can build some more depth into your account. Like you're going like super wide and you have a lot of good things in here. Like you, you have a, I would invest those datas into the Night Sisters, get that team up and running. You have a dash team, uh, a resistance team, Ray, um, Starkiller, uh, Phoenix, uh, CLS, you have a somewhat usable bounty hunters, uh, separatists, geos, Iden, uh, Sith team. So you, you have a lot of good things in here. Um, you're starting to build some Ufus for some reason. Um, probably for Ray. That Calcastus is in here for Ray, which is a really good, um, really good too. I would get his Zetas up and running too. Uh, like this is a really good character to elevate that ray team. It also you can add it in the Star Killer too. He elevates both of these, whatever variants you're using right now. So, um, excellent character right there. But overall, um, I would stick to that farming path. I said continue farming your ships. Um, your mods are doing pretty well. Once you get Java, your your mods are going to accelerate. Um, and then I would maybe go for profundity after Java. So that you can start getting a little better or um, definitely whenever the new fleet gets launched uh, the 2024 fleet or early 2025 I would go for that and that's gonna and the second you get the latest meta ship then you're gonna be able to compete in your fleet shard and not have to worry about it so that's what I did I went with I went all in on fleets when i came back because i'm a return player as well i got slkr into executor into leviathan and i was able to kind of accelerate my fleet currency with crystals and i use those crystals to gain like a bunch of growth in my account so you can do it too uh you're already like pretty much there just get slkr once the new fleet comes out then boom go for that in between when that gets announced like just go for java and work continue working on those assault battles and then also building a uh, raid currency so uh build building those teams that you need to get decent participation in your raid um, but other than that, that's my recommendations. Uh, overall, like nice count. You have a, a lot of good things in here. So I think once you, uh, you know, continue your pathway, uh, don't get too distracted. Try to build up what you have right now and just stick along that farming path. And I, I think your account will be very good and you should be hitting. Uh, hopefully, I, I don't know if you can hit Kyber or you, if you're like push into Kyber and then get pushed out because you don't have a lot into your account. But um, sitting at Erodium 2, you're doing a, a pretty good job too. So uh, overall, uh, thanks for letting me look at your account. If you have any uh, questions, concerns, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, uh, thanks, and I'll see you all next time. Take care.